What's up everyone, Tony here, and today I have a quick video that is intended to follow up my Red Dead Online 2022 Beginner's Guide. If you haven't already checked that video out, I encourage you to do so before watching this one, as the Beginner Guide covers all the game's basics, while today we'll be digging just a little deeper. I wanted to keep that video as short and simple as possible, but I also recognize that it covers a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Now, some of you may have been able to do all of that without any additional guidance. But in case you're having trouble with some of those tougher missions or legendary bounties, I'm going to outline a couple of general Red Dead Online tips that should not only help you get through the beginner hump of the game, but are simply great tips to always keep in mind for as long as you stick with the game. This probably shouldn't come as a surprise for anyone who has already played through the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2, but in case you're choosing to jump right into Red Dead Online, it's incredibly important to always have some smaller items in your arsenal at all times. You could buy these items two ways. First is from your catalog, which is accessed by holding left on the D-pad. The items you purchase are delivered to your camp and to any post office where they can be collected at any time. Method two, you can visit the stores in person to pick the items up directly. Cash wise, as long as you play through those initial 10 story missions, you should never really have to worry about spending your cash on these items. The costs are negligible in the grand scheme of things, and this is especially the case when you unlock the collector role and literally have access to unlimited cash. I'd recommend always having some food, tonics, horse food, horse tonics, the horse brush, some gun oils, horse revivers, and max ammo for your revolver and repeater. Obviously the amount you have on you is going to vary depending on your progress through the game and how much disposable income you have. When starting out, I'd say the very most important items are a couple of level 1 health tonics, health food, health and stamina food for your horse, and max ammo for both of your weapons. But as time goes on and missions get harder, you should aim to have at least 5 health, stamina, and deadeye tonics, as well as 5 plus health and stamina tonics for your horse. Ultimately, you'll have to feel it out for yourself and invest in the right items that will help you get past whatever obstacle stands in your way. Buying a top tier horse is the first and most important big purchase you're going to make in this game. It's your main mode of traversal and it becomes annoying very quickly to control a slow horse that is always out of stamina and has low health. So I recommend buying a Missouri Foxtrotter as soon as you can. It ain't cheap, coming in at a whopping $1,125. However, if you follow this video, that shouldn't be too crazy a number to reach. When I purchased the Bounty Hunter roll with my first 15 gold bars, I also had $1,852 saved. I think this is the right time to make the big horse upgrade, right before getting started with the Bounty Hunter roll. Plus, you should still have a couple hundred dollars extra for any other smaller purchases, such as the essential items I just went over in tip number one. Again, this is really the only difficult major cash purchase you're ever going to have to make since you'll be absolutely swimming in cash once you unlock the collector role. Ability cards are not super important. As someone who's played hundreds of hours of Red Dead Redemption 2, I often forget I even have access to these abilities here in Red Dead Online. I kind of just play the game pure and don't worry so much about what abilities I have or builds or whatever. Now, after playing hundreds of hours of Red Dead Online, I've never run into a case where the game is so challenging that I absolutely need to equip certain abilities to get past an obstacle. They're also pretty expensive, so for beginners especially, they're just not something you should worry about until you have that collector money, at which point you're a bit more free to buy them and experiment with the abilities for yourself. Personally, I purchased the Paint It Black ability at the beginning of the game for free, and I've always had it equipped ever since. I've never even mentioned Deadeye in this video up until this point, so maybe now is the best time. Deadeye doesn't slow down time in Red Dead Online like it does in the single player. Instead, it activates whichever Deadeye ability card you have equipped. With Painted Black, you're able to mark your target with a red X. 
With some practice, you'll be pulling off Deadeye headshots with the greatest of ease and one-shotting fools all night long. I think this ability is especially helpful for beginners because it saves you ammo compared to just shooting a dude in the leg six times to kill him. Less ammo used means less ammo purchased, which means more money in your pocket and a quicker path through the game's ranks and roles. Painted Black also assures you that you're getting that headshot, and while its value is diminished somewhat by playing with auto-aim on, I still find it very helpful. Also, there are certain missions where your auto-aim is turned off no matter what, and that's when Painted Black especially comes in handy. Even at rank 200, I still use it. All that to say, get Painted Black, and don't worry about other abilities when just getting started. You just don't need them to progress through the early stages of the game. Speaking of auto-aim, you could actually turn auto-aim off in your settings and gain a small amount of bonus XP for each free aim kill. If you're struggling with the game and its combat system, I wouldn't stress about this. Just leave auto-aim on, it's fine, we're all friends here. But if you find yourself really cruising through the game, this little bonus starts to add up when you're mowing through waves and waves of enemies. Also, shooting enemies from the hip adds yet another bonus on top. So if you're looking to collect as much XP as quickly as possible, consider turning auto-aim off and killing enemies while shooting from the hip. The Outlaw Pass is basically Red Dead Online's Battle Pass, or Seasons Pass, whatever you want to call it. While it provides a number of goodies, including cool outfits, a roll XP multiplier that helps you get through the rolls quicker, cash, discount coupons, and even gold, the issue, especially for beginners, is that initial cost. Even though you get all of your gold back by playing through the pass, that's just way too expensive a buy-in price in my opinion. I'd recommend only buying an outlaw pass after you've unlocked and played through all five rolls. If you're then able to collect the gold needed to purchase the pass, there's literally no reason not to since you'll be getting all the gold back. But for beginners, I just would not recommend it. Griefers have always been a problem in GTA Online, and especially the early days of Red Dead Online. But luckily, by entering your menu and hitting left on the D-pad, you could turn on Defensive Mode. This allows you to perform tasks like fishing, where you're literally a sitting duck for minutes on end, without having to worry about trolls picking you off for no reason. Trust me, it gets very annoying when a troll decides to pick on you and kill you over and over. These people really have nothing better to do. You can always just quit out of the server and find a new one, but defensive mode is a great option too. There is no tangible disadvantage when playing in defensive compared to offensive, so there's literally no reason not to play with defensive mode on at all times until the game forces you into offensive when playing certain missions. Red Dead Online's world is so huge that I won't hesitate to use fast travel posts when I need to get to a faraway point on the map. However, when money is tight as you're just getting started, consider taking advantage of Red Dead Online's online menu. If you're in New Austin and want to get to Saint Denis, you can save money by simply going into this menu and choosing Le Moyne. It probably won't drop you right into the city, but you'll at least be nearby free of charge. I use this method of quasi-fast traveling a lot until I unlocked the collector roll and had so much cash in my pocket that spending for fast travel became a non-issue. Also, if you're making a long trek on foot, remember to use cinematic mode to your advantage by placing a marker at your destination of choice, then riding on the path and going into cinematic mode, your horse goes into autopilot and you won't need to input any controls. This is a great opportunity to go to the washroom, eat some food, do some push-ups, or check out the John Ropke map for the exact location of the next treasure you desire. All the while, your character is heading towards the destination all on their own. Now that's what I call productivity. When starting out in Red Dead Online, your health, stamina, and deadeye meters are hilariously tiny and drain super quickly. Same deal with your horse's health and stamina stats. 
The quicker they drain, the more you need to use items and tonics to fill them back up. And the more of those you need to buy, the more money you're wasting. And we don't want to waste money. So how do you max out your five key stats? Let's begin with health. Health could be increased by catching fish. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird. The fishing rod could be purchased at rank 14, so buy it as soon as you can along with some bait, then spend as much time as you'd like fishing to get that health stat leveled up. Did I mention how important podcasts are if you want to get far in Red Dead Online? Fist fights also level up your health stat, but it's pretty annoying to die and respawn way the hell in the middle of a field with no punchable faces in sight. I prefer the fishing method myself. Stamina is by far the easiest. Just run. Run, run, run. Tap the run button. Mash the run button. You should hit max stamina first out of the three stats. Finally, we have Deadeye. Deadeye increases by hunting and skinning wild animals and by killing enemies with Deadeye active. Like health, Deadeye takes quite a while to max out, so keep that in mind. As for your horse, you'll want to max out its bonding level as quickly as possible. You could do so by feeding it as much food as you can find. When stationary, you could brush, pet, or feed the horse, and this all helps towards your goal as well. Also, clicking your left stick while riding your horse will calm them, and doing this regularly will also help you reach max bond with your horse. The horse care methods I just mentioned also contribute to your horse's health and stamina stats. Honestly, just from regular play, you will find yourself maxing out all of your horse's stats fairly quickly. It's really not difficult at all. And with that, we are going to wrap it up for today and truly wrap up the beginner portion of the Red Dead Online experience. I hope these tips, in addition to the beginner guide video, were able to help any of you new players out there looking to dip your toes into the world of Red Dead Online. But trust me, there's still so much more of that world to experience and so much more content this game has to offer. Next time, I'll be back with a full-on Bounty Hunter role guide updated and revised for 2022. If that sounds good to you and you want to see more Red Dead Online guides and content, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. As always, I have a ton in the works, but until next time, thanks so much for watching everyone and take care.